Hi everyone, I just wanted to show you something that I think you might find interesting. And it's about this video right here, which was sent to me by a dear friend and a brother in Christ. And normally I don't watch videos like this about CERN and about things that I don't really understand that much about. But this video caught my attention and I just want to show you why it caught my attention and I'm just gonna read some things that were on this vid that were in this video it was basically a reading of this text right here and I'm just gonna read part of it and it says what just happened physicists at, at CERN have discovered four new tetraquark particles unusual arrangements of four fundamental particles called quarks. The new particles are highly unstable, decaying almost immediately into other particles. These are not new fundamental particles heralding a new era, era of physics, like the unexpected new one recently hinted at, but rather are new combinations of previously known particles in the standard model of particle physics. The new particles are called exotic because they are made of four quarks. Quarks usually group together in twos or threes. And I may read more of this later, but what I want to do right now is I want to show you something that I think you might find interesting. So I looked up the word quark, and the, the reason I did all of this is because of some research that I had done some time ago in Zechariah 4 and I don't think it's by accident that it's Zechariah 4 and we're talking about four new X particles here and quarks but I'll go ahead and, and read you the definition of a quark it says a quark is an elementary particle and a fundamental constituent of matter Quarks combine to form composite particles called hadrons, the most stable of which are protons and neutrons, the components of atomic nuclei. Okay, now for you to understand where, where I'm going with this, I, I need to show you another scripture, and that's this one right here. It's in 1 Corinthians. 1552 it says behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed now what a lot of people don't realize is where it says in a moment the word here in the Greek is actually the word atom we're going to be changed in an atom and the concept is that an atom is the smallest particle that cannot be divided it's basically indivisible indivisible because it's the, the the smallest particle that exists until of course you know they, they split the atom supposedly I'm not sure how all of that works but it's the smallest particle that, that is indivisible because it's so small that is the concept of the meaning here and the translators took that to mean the smallest amount of time so they translated it as moment but I think there's a lot more to it than that, and that, that's what I want to show you. But first I'm going to go through some more of the definitions that were in this video right here. It talked about quarks, and then it talked about tetraquarks. And a tetraquark is a participle, in participle physics, is an exotic meson composed of four 
excuse me, four valence quarks. Okay, and, and this is where it gets interesting because, and I'm not going to pretend that I understand what all this stuff means because I really don't, but there's something interesting that I want to show you. Here in Zechariah 4, it says, and this is interesting right here, it says, For who hath despised the day of small things? Okay, the atom is the smallest particle. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Okay, the word plummet here, in both the Hebrew and the Greek, it's actually made up of two different words, but it was just translated as one word. It was translated as plummet. But in the Hebrew, it's made up of two words. One means stone, and it can also mean a weight, a plummet, also made of metal. It has a number of meanings. And then the second word in the Hebrew is a word that means alloy, tin, or, or dross. Okay, then when you look at this word in the Greek, there, there's two words in the Greek as well. The first word is lithon, which is the word we, that we get rock or stone from. That's what it means. And then the second word is this word right here. It's This word is kasiterinon. So that word is pronounced. And I just want to show you the definition of that word. In, in the, it's got a couple of meanings. And one of those meanings, as you can see here in the Bible Hub Dictionary, it means a, a dry stalk. And a stalk is basically a reed. You can see a reed over here is a straight stalk of any of various grasses. And then I've talked about before how Zechariah 4 is a parallel of Revelation 11. So I'll just go ahead and pull up Revelation 11 real quick. And notice the number 11. But it says over here, there was given to me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. So reed is like a piece of straw or stalk like we saw in the other definition over here. Okay, so it's basically the same thing, and you can see the, the word right here that was used in Zechariah 4. So it has that meaning, but if you go to Google Translate, you see that it has another meaning. If you go into Google Translate and you put that word in, you see that it means stanic. It has a scientific meaning as well. So if you go to the word stanic, you see that it means of or containing tin, which the Hebrew talked about, that it means tin, and maybe I'll get back to that in a second. But then it says, especially in the tetravalent state. And so if you look up tetravalent, you see that tetravalent means it has a, a valence of four. And then a valence means, in chemistry, it says the quality that determines the number of atoms or groups with which any single atom or group will, con will unite chemically. So a valency is how many atoms or groups with which any single atom will unite chemically that's what number the, the the valence is and then we went if you go back to tetra, tetra quark you see that that means it has 
a four valence, four valence quark. So it has a valency of four. And like I said, I'm not saying that I understand all of this, but what was supposedly unique about what happened at CERN, so this is what just happened, supposedly they discovered a tetraquark or these new particles that are made of four quarks so they combine in fours rather than twos and threes from what I'm understanding here and then it says physicists at the Large Hadron Collider made the discovery okay I'm not going to read that okay over here it says at the deepest level we are all made of quarks. Quarks are the fundamental particles that gang together to form protons and neutrons. They come in six flavors. And then it goes on to talk about that. So we're all made of quarks. And the key here is that they've made some quarks that combine in four rather than rather than two or three so that's what i'm understanding here that it and that's what's unique about what they found so they're trying to combine them into a valency of four particles and we saw that in zechariah 4 the measuring of the temple had to do with the word stanic which means having a valency of four. And I'll just show you that definition again. You see here, stanic, it says, of or containing tin, especially in the tetravalent, I'm not sure how you pronounce that word, I guess, let me see. Yeah, it's tetravalent, I'm sorry, I mispronounced that earlier. So it has a valency of four. So they're trying to, achieve at CERN or, or what they just achieved at CERN is producing a tetraquark which has a valence of four and then we see in Zechariah four we see Zerubbabel which is measuring the temple which is a type of Christ he's measuring the temple with a plummet and a plummet means it's also called a plumb bob, a piece of lead, or some other weight attached to a line used for determining perpendicularity. So this is measuring the uprightness of something. And usually when you measure a straight line like that, it's a lot of times it's used so that you can cut the object right down the middle in a perfectly straight line so you need to use a plummet or plumb line to measure a straight line but you're also measuring the uprightness of an object when you use a plummet but in this case the plummet also means the stone which is put on the top of the temple which is Jesus and then it also means the rod which is used to measure the temple and in English it also means plummet which is measuring the uprightness of the temple and then in the Hebrew it meant uh, alloy or tin which what's interesting here is you also see the word stanum right here which is another word scientific word for for tin and it means what I had said earlier about stanic having a tetravalent state of four or valency of four which is what a tetravalent state is and looks like I'm about out of time so I'm gonna have to finish explaining this in the next video thank you